opportunities on this channel at the minute are getting ridiculous. We're here again with Marek Reichman, Good to see you again. designer at Aston Martin. Um, now, this is the first time, obviously, that I've laid eyes on this. As a bit of context, Aston Martin have very kindly invited me behind the scenes before the official reveal. Tell us all about it. I mean, if anyone could ever imagine hypercars getting any more hyper, you've gone and done it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, internally, obviously, <laughs> zero, zero, 002, that, because it's the yeah. second of the Valkyrie runs. It's 25 units only. Okay. It's track-based only. Um, it has more superlatives attached to it than I can <laughs> possibly tell you. I, um, I guess from my point of view, the interesting thing is because it's track only, yeah. you've had the ability to go no rules, no regulations, yeah. let's go mad. Yeah, so what has that allowed you to do? So it's the same tub, same tub as the road going car. Yeah. So obviously the, the whole idea initially was that that tub would become road mm -hmm. and track version. Okay. It's the engine, but now gear driven. So it's, you know, in terms of horsepower, upwards of 1100. 1100 horsepower. 11, 1100 horsepower. Okay. And less than a thousand kilos of weight. So going beyond the one to one power to weight so ratio. So you've gone and done the unicorn. That, the absolutely. magic number and yeah. some. Yeah, the magic wow. number. Okay. Um, in terms of its performance figures, you're about three Gs in cornering and lateral cornering. So the forces <laughs> that, you would, that, that you would have and um, greater than 1,100 kilos of downforce as well, so it's... Uh, so you're in formula territory. In, yeah, in this, this car, I mean, again, indicatively from all the analysis that we've done, uh -huh. all, all of the kind of feedback that we've had from, obviously, the aero work that mostly is done in CAD at this phase, yes. this would put you in the top 10 in F1 race, and it would put you close to pole position in an LMP1 race at the moment. So you've got yourself like a consumer LMP1 winning car. You, effectively, yes. Mental. I don't know where to be. Uh, uh, you weren't joking with the. No, no, ab absolutely. And, and, it, and it carries on. It carries on going in terms yeah. of its its construction. Obviously, it's it, it's Formula One technology from the top construction. Yes. How the carbon is laid up. Um, the information, data feedback, the telemetry that's in the car that obviously you're getting constant feedback on. But the genius about it is there isn't that much active aero on the car. There's, there's an active rear wing, uh -huh. there are a few baffles underneath that are active, yes. but most of the car is, is there as passive with yes. aero because it's so efficient. I mean, it's the lowest car in the world. It looks um, so. It's uh, below 40 inches, so wow. a GT40 GT loses its mantle. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, and, it, and it has a very drivable seating position so you when you're actually seated in the car yeah. it's a little bit like sitting in a bathtub so you have your okay. ankles higher than your butt okay you, right. you're relaxed against the, the sure. tub yeah and, and we call it um, lobstering so okay. every point of your body is in uh -huh. contact with some surface so you're, you're actually not getting pressure points anywhere so okay. it's an incredibly comfortable driving position great vision out and and obviously to get the best out of this, you're going to have to go through a training program to get you up to speed. So the 25 lucky individuals, who by the way, I believe they're all sold out, um, you're going to have to be a hell of a driver yes. or a hell of a collector. And One some, of the two. some of them are drivers anyway, sure. um, yes. we can't talk about that, but they are hell of, hell of a yes. collector, yes. hell of a driver, sure. um, but we've tried to make sure that out of that 25, this product goes to the people who will use it, who will take it to the track, yes. going to get it out on the track, and, and hopefully all together. Yeah. You know, imagine absolutely. seeing 25 oh, of these absolutely naturally aspirated again. So you know, that's so. something else. So this is, I mean, we've heard it's now around 1,100 brake horsepower. Yeah. This is from a naturally aspirated V12. Right. V12. Do we? Are we allowed to talk about how high that revs yet at all? Um, we aren't. Okay. But, it's, but it'll be it'll sound, sound good. It, it will sound good, <laughs> and, and in, in excess of ten thousand RPM. Um, naturally aspirate a sound then. Oh, so we're tuning God. all of the exhaust system, obviously, to get out of that. It's going to be insane. Ambient temperatures around the muffler, around, around the exhaust, are yes. about eight hundred degrees C. So again, that wow. brings in okay, uh, complications with materials I and what we're able to use. Yeah. And it's the reason there is a covered F1 car just behind yes. because all of the materials that are used yeah. in the production of that car come yes. into the production well of i was car. about to say really one of the the only ways i can really begin to put this thing into words and do it any justice is 
when you look at it, particularly when you look down low and through all of the aero work, it really does feel like you've got a formula car with an exoskeleton. Yeah, it yeah. really does feel like And I think going back to your early comment, this is this is unconstrained. It's unconstrained by a regulation of race series, it's unconstrained by the regulations of on-road. Um, it's a huge um, Venturi underneath the car that gives you to these this fat, fantastic diffuser at the back. And when you look from the back, you see these billowing diffusers. Sculptures. It's just defining the airflow. You're effectively ground effect from there rearwards because it's all exiting air that's coming out at greater greater pressure than, than what sits under here. So talk to me just quickly about from a, a designer's point of view, having that blank canvas and going no rules off you go. What is that opportunity like? Uh, it's it's <laughs> unbelievable. Obviously working with Adrian Newey uh, yes. and David King. Yeah. Um, as a team, you know, it's it's push, it's hard. You know, we yeah. are challenging. Yeah. We're challenging parameters on a daily basis. The we're we're challenging. Out of the window with this. Yeah, it's yeah. completely gone. You know, everything counts. Every single um, gram counts in terms of its weight count. Yes. And, and weight versus aero, etc., etc. But it's a it's a it's a designer's dream. You know, because here's where you can see that aerodynamics can create beautiful surfaces as well and working together with Adrian to develop the surface language so it's not just about the beauty of airflow it's also about the beauty of the language that the air is creating and I've always said that in, in a way that Adrian's genius is forcing the air underneath the car to do what he needs it to do yes and the upper surfaces have been about beauty and creating beautiful yes. surfaces from the airflow that needs to be uninterrupted by the language I mean, sculpturally, I've never seen anything like it. There's some angles, particularly elevated angles, looking down on top of some beautiful pearl drop yeah. effects yeah. and shapes around it that just look out yeah. of this world. So even in its concept stage now, what, what percentage would you roughly estimate it would be its final? I, I think this is about 85%. Oh, wow, away. so a long way yeah. through. Yeah. Long, way a long way through. Long way through. Wow. Biggest potential changes will be around the rear diffuser and the yeah. twin rear diffuser and whether we actually employ a little bit of a different system okay. there. So it's but basically changing once you put a bit more time into aero. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the physical testing of the aero. Well, well if it's 85% if it's of that, I think you've 100% nailed it. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, can't wait to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> can't absolutely. wait to hear it because it sounds absolutely. amazing. And, uh, yeah, it's it's all really in a way as well. It's more about the, the volumes and the spaces versus the yes. actual volume that's there. So when you see the cut throughs, it really is getting air off the product as quickly as you can, right. so that it's it's efficient through the air. And yeah, sound. Having heard the first road-going engines on the Dyna of Cosworth, yeah. and they're the road-going engines, yes. and they're just doing a cycle at a constant revs per minute at the moment. They sound glorious, absolutely glorious. Well, in a, in a world where, unfortunately, all of this is dying out, I think it's amazing that uh, you guys have had the balls to go and do something so fantastic. So, Great. congratulations, well done. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Thank you. Cheers.